Now, Find My Past has the most comprehensive collection of military service records online, and they give us wonderful insight uh, into the lives of our military ancestors. Now, now we have Paul Nixon, who is Find My Past's resident military historian, who's going to detail some approaches that he took when researching the community of Chaley in Sussex during the First World War. Paul will demonstrate how to make the most out of Find My Past's impressive collection of Royal Navy, British Army, and Royal Air Force records. Paul? Thanks, Josh, and thanks for tuning in, everybody. Um, what I'd like to do is just take you back a few years, back to 1980. Um, my grandfather was in the First World War, and so were his four brothers. One of them was killed. And, and when he died, um, I always regretted not speaking to him, not having spoken to him a bit more. So I, I set out to try and interview men where I lived in Essex. Mm -hmm. Um, and, I, and the newspaper took the story up and, uh, and people responded. And, and one of the people who responded was a man who said, I wasn't in the war, but my aunt was a nurse. Would you be interested in looking at the album that she kept? So I said I was, and I went along and looked at it, but really I was more interested in, in meeting men. So I took a few notes and I, and I put it by for, for a few years and then went back to it in about 10 years later, actually. You have to remember that then there was no internet at all. So all the research that I was doing was uh, on microfilm at... Um, at National Archives on, on microfiche as well. And I had no idea where Chaley was. This is where this lady had nursed. Um, but I soon found out it was in Sussex. Um, this is looking on, um, on an A to Z probably. As I say, no internet. Now you'd go straight to the internet, wouldn't you, and find it. But it's in Sussex, in a very beautiful uh, rural part of Sussex on the, on the road to Lewis. I've got a few um, maps here on the presentation. The parish itself extends um, from Sheffield Park in the north through to North Chaley and then centre of Chaley, which is centred around a pub, as so many villages are, and then f further south to South Chaley. So it's, a, it's an extended community, really. And the book that I had from um, Nurse Oliver, that was the name of the lady who kept the album, was full of anecdotes, uh, it, was f it was full of um, little rhymes, um, maybe just a, a regimental number and rank of a soldier who she'd nursed. It had photos as well. And I really thought, OK, let me try and research this. Let me try and find out a bit more about where these men came from. Um, so here's a, a photo of a place called AIDS in Chaley, A-D-E-S. Um, I had no idea what it was. I mean, you can obviously see it's a stately home, but what relevance did it have to the story? Um, so I, I started researching the book. There was um, a picture of Margaret Coatsworth, who was the commandant for, the, for Sussex 54 VAD. That's Voluntary Aid Detachment. That's where Nurse Oliver worked. They were volunteer nurses. Photo of her, photo of other nurses around the edge, and then lots of entries in the album as well from soldiers. And I didn't know whether these soldiers were wounded or whether they were sick or why they were there. They could have just been friends of nurses for that matter. So what I did, um, what, what Amy was saying earlier on, one of our other speakers, I set off to just record all the information that I could do, first of all, in a spreadsheet. So there, was, there were photos, there were these three photos here, of wounded soldiers in fancy dress, and it said Hickwells, Chaley 1915. What was Hickwells? I, I had no idea what Hickwells was. Um, and then another entry, um, wishing you pros uh, prosperity and happiness from Beechland Convalescent Hospital. So there's another name. What's Beechland? What's that got to do with Hickwells? Is it another name for Hickwells? It, it wasn't made easier by the fact that some of the entries in the album had been written over in Biro by later, later on. This, this is by the, the nephew of the nurse. Well-meaning, well he'd, he'd written over the entries so as to preserve them, but um, it was quite difficult, actually, th then trying to decipher some of the writing there. But gradually, um, a picture emerged, and, and I went down to Chaley. I went down a few times, and I met some of the old uh, residents in Chaley. And I met somebody whose aunt had also nursed there, and she was quite well-to-do. She was from a very wealthy family in Chaley. And some of her photos also came to me. So gradually, as I say, I'm, build I'm building, a re building a picture, getting more names, getting more, more photos. But... As I say, the initial research steps were to draw up a list of, of all the individuals, put them on a spreadsheet, and then start filling in the gaps. Now, I just wish I'd done this today, because it's so much easier. I mean, now, now it's all there online. It's all, it's all here with, with Find My Past. Um, back in those days, I had to go to Kew, and, and I was living in Essex. So this was weekends and holiday, holiday from work. I was going up there. And, and even the service records weren't all available then, for that matter. They just started filming them, putting them on microfilm. But it was a palaver. Um, it, was, it was difficult to get the, get the information. Um, but here's a good example of one of the men that I had some successes with. And, and that thrill of finding somebody in a record was fantastic, finding it at the National Archives after spending so many hours often going through and you suddenly find, find the man you want. But this, this man was a great example. 
whose name is, is Charles Sabaran, I presume that's the pronunciation. Um, East Surrey Regiment, 1st East Surrey Regiment. A regular soldier, he joined up in 1900. Um, he went to the Boer War, to the tail end of the Boer War. Um, he went to India after that. And he was on Section D reserve. So he'd finished his army service uh, because he joined in 1900, 12 years service, colours and, and reserve. Signed off for Section D reserve, Britain goes to war. He is recalled as a reservist. He goes to Mons with the East Surreys, with, with the regular battalion, and he's wounded on the first day. Such a severe wound um, that his leg is uh, amputated very high uh, on, on the thigh, and you can see the picture of him there. Um, and his entry in, in the album is, is great because it says, wounded and captured at Mons, I would like to meet the German who fired that shrapnel. I would certainly treat him. <laughs> um, so, but anyway, uh, Savaran has uh, a medal index card, uh, which you can access the index on, on Farmer Pass. He also, uh, fantastically, has service records in 363 and 364. So you can see when a soldier in, uh, attested, he, signed, he, he filled, filled the papers out twice. Uh, and these are both the papers here. One is very badly damaged, because it's in 363. It's very badly charred. Uh, you, all the edges are missing. Uh, but the other one is, is in good condition. That's in 364. Uh, he signed one C. Sabaran, the other one Charles Sabaran, and what I did was compare those signatures with the signature in the autograph book, and, uh, and, and it's the same man, undoubtedly. Um, now, finding the records on, on Find My Past for him, uh, he's easy because he's got a, an odd name, and I, I'm just showing an example on the presentation where I've searched on Charles Sabaran, 1882, for his year of birth, there or thereabouts, and it gives me everything. It gives me the, uh, the records we've just looked at, he was also in the militia, and we have the militia records as well, which is W096. So we have a militia record for him before he joins the, the regular army. Pretty full. And we have his birth details. He lived till uh, 1953, uh, so we got his death in, in 1953 when he would have been, what, 70-odd. Uh, um, so he had a reasonable, reasonable run. I don't know, run is not the right word to use, is it? But he had a, re he had a reasonable, uh, uh, reasonable life. So, so the next steps, um, I mean, having got all the men not satisfied with the wounded men or, and the nurses, I then thought, well, that's only part of the picture. I've got to see what the people of Chaley did, the men of Chaley did as well. Um, that's that whole community. What were they doing in the First World War? Um, so I contacted the record office. They didn't really have very much there for, for what I was looking for, but the church did. I went to the church, and they still had the Chaley Parish magazine from, from 1914 right through to 1918, with all the men listed every month, what they were doing, where they were, and so I, again, back, back to that same filling in the information. Um, and there's, there's an example there. So you have a whole range of men, different regiments, uh, Army Service Corps, you've got the Royal Air Force, you've got the, the Navy. Um, in total, the names that I've, that I've got is approaching 600, and, and there's, still, there's still more. And it's frightening that I started this in probably 1990 seriously, and I'm still not finished. I'm still, still going through looking at, looking at records for them. So, anyway, to, to find my past, what you can find on Find My Past, it's the perfect place to, to look for military records, and there's never been a better time to find them. And I'm particularly glad to be talking about this now, um, 100 years on from, from the anniversary of the start of the war. So, um, as I say, unlike the wounded soldiers who served in the army, Chaley's men served in all, uh, all three services, Navy, Army, and Air Force. Um, I did the hard work by going to Q, but you can do it easily now on Find My Past. Um, so you can search um, for the Navy records. Let's start with the Navy. That's the senior service, so let's start with the Navy. Um, if you just typed in Navy um, in, in, to, in a general military search, you get all those results. And what we have, which is going to be of use and interest to people searching First World War ancestors, is seamen's records from 1899 to 1919. That's men who served in the Navy but were not officers and Royal Navy officers for the, for the same time period. So the reason we chose that period was that um, it should cover the majority of men who served. You'll get men who joined up in 1899, who, who then went through the period of reserve and might have uh, uh, re-engaged or extended that period of reserve. So you'll catch them. You'll also catch the people who joined up during the First World War. And there's an example there of Alfred Mitchell, um, who was served on HMS Devonshire. Just a, a, a simple entry I had. From the, from the parish magazine. I didn't, don't think I even had a number for him, just that he was in the Royal Navy. But, but you, you, you do the searching, you type in first name, last name, um, and th there comes the record. Now, the Royal Navy records are not as uh, complete as the, as, as the Army records. They're complete, but they're not as detailed. You know, it's, it's one page for the most part. Um, and, um, but, but it certainly gives you the service history. You go, go right through from when the man joined to when he was discharged. 
Uh, the British Army, um, the, key, the key data sets here are the metal index cards and the, and the service records and pension records. And, but there's a, an additional 46 collections of military records which will supplement what, what we have. So you might find a man in a service record. You might also find him in a PALS battalion role. Um, you, you might find him in an artillery role. For some of the Chaley men, for instance, I could find no record for them in 363 or 364. But when I looked at the Royal Artillery, there they were in, in the Royal Artillery um, attestation books. Uh, and, and that gives a very good summary as well. So you know, there's, there's, there's lots there to look for. Um, if you're unsure, search across all military data sets. Um, I, because I know my way around the site and I know exactly what I want to find, I'm looking for service records for the First World War and I'm looking for service rec records before the First World War. So I would tend to go to the A to Z search and I'd be typing in British. And once you've typed British, you'll have a, a whole list and it, it's about the fourth or fifth options down. But it's the, those records are, are getting big hits from me um, and have, have done for a while. Uh, this next uh, screen here, shows you another set not to ignore when you're doing your military research for the First World War. This is my great-grandmother's brother, uh, whose name was Bert Elam, E-L-A-M. Um, he enlisted as Herbert Hellam, so he enlisted under, uh, under a pseudonym. Uh, I don't know why, um, but, but he did. On his First World War papers, it says that he previously served with the Wiltshire Regiment, but there are no papers in 363 or 364. However, if you go back to... W97, which are the pension papers from 1760 to 1913. There he is. He's, he's there. Um, and he was, he's a very colourful character. I like to think of him as a typical uh, army uh, soldier, Victorian soldier. There's some very colourful language which he's directly quoted uh, from, uh, attributed to him in, uh, in W096, where he tells the, uh, the sergeant he's done with uh, so-and-so stabling. This was when he was in the, in the Hussars, because he was in the Wiltshire Regiment, bought himself out of the regiment, then joined the Hussars, uh, did his service in South Africa, later served in the Rifle Brigade and the Gloucestershire Regiment in the First World War and the Royal Defence Corps. So he had a, he had a very varied career, actually. Um, but it's all there, a complete service history. And then uh, the, the Royal Air Force uh, is, is, the, is, the more, is the junior service. That's the last uh, uh, collection that, that I would look at now. Um, and we have exclusive records here. We've got the Airmen's Service Records, um, in full colour, scanned in full colour with our partner, the National Archives. And, and a lot of the images that you've seen here are from the National Archives. They're Crown copyright images and they're from, from our partner, the TNA. Um, so we've got those images from them. And we've also got uh, service records for officers for the Air Force as well. So again, I found Chaley men um, in, in those service records. So there's, there's lots there. What, what I would say finally um, is please use Find My Past and make the most of it now. Um, I was saying this on, on the radio the other day. Don't wait and think I'll do it tomorrow. Do it now, because you'll, you'll be surprised at how, how quickly the time goes by. Um, also, uh, I, I found it very useful. When I got all this research together, I didn't know whether to publish as a book or whether to publish online. Um, and I took the decision to publish online because I wanted some more information. And all the photos you see on, on my last slide are photos that people have sent me, um, search engines being what they are, um, just those keywords, Chaley and somebody's name. If I was looking for my grandfather, I'd go for Walter Nixon, Stratford. Um, I'd hope to find something. There isn't anything there. Well, what is there is from me. But for, for people who are looking for their Chaley um, ancestors, they're going Chaley and the name and coming up with information from my site and are then contacting me and I give them information and they give me information. So it's a two-way process. But I definitely recommend, um, recommend doing that. I've, I've done it um, on a blog which is free um, and uh, there are plenty of blogs out there which you can choose from. All right, wonderful. Thank you so much, Paul. I know we have a lot of questions and only a, a very short amount of time for a few, so we'll try and get through one or two. Uh, the first question that one of our customers asked is, how would I go about finding or identifying the service records of ancestors, but you are not sure what branch of service or regiment they served in? It's very difficult. Um, it's easier if, if the name is uh, unusual, like, like uh, Charles Saber, and if had I not known he'd been in the East Surrey Regiment, um, then, then I could have made an educated guess. But if it's... Uh, if, if there is no, um, no, uh, no surviving information about the regiment or the number, then it's going to be quite tricky. I think the thing to do is to, to nevertheless still do that, to still put the, the known information into the search, so into, into service records, and into the, the metal index card search. One thing to bear in mind with the metal index cards is that your relative could have served, your ancestor could have served, but if he or she didn't serve abroad or wasn't awarded a Silver War badge, they won't be in, the, in that metal index card collection. 
Okay, so, so, so the answer is really you use the, the search that Fun and Past has across all the military collections. Yes, you do. And yeah, you and, and just, uh, yeah, and you can, you can probably rule out some people. You, you get the results and you go through the results, and, and if that's clearly not your person, if he was born somewhere completely different, then you, you cross that one out. All right, well, I'm afraid we don't have any more time for questions, though we are going to be live on Facebook uh, for an hour after the broadcast, and we can ask and answer as many questions about the military, and Paul will be on hand to answer those. Great. So we'll take a brief break and be right back. Thanks.